We are now live with Byron Hacker of the Master Gardeners here at the Chilton Public Library. And today Byron's going to talk with us about keeping our garden healthy. The truth, Byron? Yeah, we're, we're all ready for this. So. <laughs> and, you know, it's always kind of fun uh, to try and keep your garden healthy, well, well, even yeah. though it's somewhat difficult. Thank you. You're welcome. Are um, these more comfortable than the other tree? No. Oh, so now, now the other customers are doing which chair is the most comfortable. So I should get up and switch chairs and to get a comfortable <laughs> chair. <laughs> Where's a little kid chair? Um, oh, so we'll talk about keeping soil healthy and keeping your garden healthy. And I just went through and made some different notes because other people like to do things different ways than somebody else might. So one thing to keep your garden healthy is a compost. And people always ask, well, what should we put and use for compost? The big thing is leaves, straw, wood chips, sawdust, grass clippings, uh, or whatever you want, except don't use food products. Um, not if, kitchen scraps or eggshells? Not kitchen scraps? No, you shouldn't use there. kitchen scraps because no. why? Rolls. What does that attract? Rolls. Varmints. Oh, okay. okay. And uh, eggshells is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and uh, nice. boy, we got all kinds of good things. Here. <laughs> um, so what, whatever you want to use to make your compost. And the big thing, if you're going to use grass clippings, use your own grass clippings to make sure that they're not... Um, treated with chemicals. And that's the big thing. A lot of people go to the compost site when they come in all these nice, beautiful green grass clippings and don't do it because you don't know if there's chemicals added to that. And you don't want to use that for your compost and for on your garden because you might put it around your plants and your plants might all be dead. You don't know. Another thing is manure. Uh, the best kind of manure to use for your gardens and keeping for your soil, horse and cow manure is the best. Sheep and goat are not near as good because that can throw off your pH real easily versus cow or horse manure. And the best time to put that on is in winter or in fall when you're done with your garden. Put it on, let it sit there over winter, and then work it in the next uh, spring when you work your garden. So what do you, and the best is old manure too. Uh, never use fresh manure uh, if you're going to put it on your garden and because you'll have plants older. <coughs> so, um, also, you can add lime or wood ashes mixed in with your compost, which will raise your pH. And the best thing is do a soil test. And if you know your soil is real acidic, okay, then use um, lime or wood ashes mixed in with your compost to raise your pH. Unless you're growing blueberries and you know, all kinds and of sulfur on it, because that will lower your pH. Also, if you want to just use commercial fertilizer, the best is use a 10 10 10 fertilizer. And people say, well, what does 10 10 10 mean? Well, 10, 10, 10, it's 10% 10 nitrogen, 10% phosphorus, 10% potassium. 
you know, any farmer knows, you know, and I got one sitting in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, 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 heard all the numbers. Back row, and he's shaking his head. And they come with all the different numbers and all yeah, kinds of combinations. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, or you can plant cover crops. A lot of people have been doing that. Farmers do a lot of that. I had a whole field behind me. You know, they plant rye, rye grass, or oats, and then they work it under, and so it, they're just spraying them and and no direct kill. Direct, kill. Yeah, direct right. yes, yes. Oh, yep. They, that's, they kill it and spray it. First? Yeah, sure. No, they don't have to first. They can always no till it and then go and spray it. Yeah. Oh. That's basically it's it's to hold the soil. That's okay. what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. their fields are getting bigger. Bigger, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the line that's, is left. Yeah. That's why they're talking about no-till gardening. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a big movement now. Not tilling your garden at all. And just uh, no-till and plant right in. Mm -hmm. So, so um, all of you know, you know, nitrogen uh, is used for leaf development, phosphorus, um, the P is for fruiting and good growth, uh, root development, and uh, potassium for root development and disease resistant. And people ask, well, how much fertilizer should we put on? Well, 15 pounds of 10, 10, 10 per thousand square feet of garden area. So it's not tons, you know, and um, People always think, well, I'll add double that in my plants and do so much better. Well, it might, you might be shooting yourself in the foot. Just like I bought a bunch of chemicals along today to kind of talk about, you know, reading labels and things like that. So we'll get to that. But uh, pH, what is our best pH for gardens? I'm going to guess it's seven. Seven? I'm going to guess seven. Around seven, it's yes. Neutral. Six, neutral. Six point one to seven is great for growing vegetables. More neutral pH. If you want, uh, if your soil's acidic or below 6.1, add some lime. But that doesn't mean take tons of it and add it. Worst thing you could do if you overdose stuff. If your soil is more alkaline, above <coughs> 7.5, add sulfur to lower it. One of our master gardeners, remember, <laughs> he always would preach, you know, go and put sulfur on, you know, because you got to lower your pH, lower your pH. Well, a lot of times it dropped too much. And then you become more acidic, and you don't want your garden like that. If you're using commercial fertilizer, work it into the soil, um, and understand pH does it doesn't change immediately because you put lime or sulfur on. And if you use that to change your pH, that should be good for up to four or five years. And it's not that you're gonna dump um, <clears throat> stuff like that on every single year, you don't have to. So then also to keep your soil and your plants happy, um, your garden loves water. And sometimes we get buccal amounts of rain and then other times we are in drought. Um, you know, it's, it's air dry. is very dry now. Mm -hmm. And when you saw everybody, saw, oh, the fields are so wet. Well, did you see the farmers working? It's like a <laughs> dust bowl yeah. behind the equipment. Um, you know, unbelievable. So same with your garden. Um, each vegetable that you got that you plant has a different water need than a different vegetable. Broccoli might be completely different than a tomato. So broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage 
They like their moisture for head development. So when it's forming their head, that's when the uh, coal crops need more moisture, more water. Um, carrots, radishes, and turnips, they need the water for root development and root, root enlargement. Muskmelons and um, the fruit when it sets fruit and with uh, early development. So that's when your melons need more water than, um, and so if it's very dry and your uh, melons are setting fruit and they're developing, that's when you need to give them extra water. Peppers and tomatoes, they drink water endlessly, no matter when, from the day you plant to the day you pull them out. Um, they love water. Uh, squash the same way, bud development, and when they're flowering, uh, that's when they need more of the moisture. Um, beans, which this surprised me, uh, beans like more moisture when the pods are enlarging and the water will help them, yeah, help you have uh, longer and better bean production. Sweet corn, so the big thing is when it's starting to soak, when it's tasseling, and also the ear development. That's why the farmers that have even regular corn, that's when they want the moisture. A lot of times we don't get it when it's like that. So, so any questions about any of that good stuff so do you, far? Do you mulch, Brian? Mulch? Yeah, yes. Um, and we, when you mulch, what's the purpose of mulching? Keeping the moisture in, in the wheat. The one? Keep the weeds down and moisture in. Yes, moisture in, weeds down. And uh, a lot of times people put plastic down. Uh, you're seeing, you know, black plastic and they'll put it on their garden and then they'll make a hole where they're going to put their plant and put it in. So, and, but if you do that, you have to make sure you have little holes someplace because one little hole where your plant is, your plants are not going to get enough moisture um, because it'll all run off. And so you have to have, you know, some of that. But uh, wood chips, grass clippings, again, your straw. own grass clippings, straw, yes. Um, and everybody has their own little preference yeah. as what they like to use. And there's no hard and fast answer. Well, straw is the best, or right. wood chips are the best, or grass clippings. Do you have a source for straw this year? <laughs> and uh, uh, what's the cocoa bean? It's you another get one. hungry when you go outside. Yeah, it's yeah. It's <laughs> and uh, for a while, they were grinding up tires and using, um, you know, the the shredded rubber I don't for. Want that. for yeah, I don't think that would be good though. It never goes away. No, it never. Exactly. You would have to break it off when you're done. Too much work for me. <laughs> Too much work. So. Um, people always say, well, don't you ever, and I, I always kid, well, that's why I got my wife around, she's, uh, she's not here to defend herself, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's yeah, kind of, you know, try to be a lazy gardener, be as efficient as what you can be, you know, don't make more work for yourselves when you don't need to, um, so the other thing is keeping your soil healthy is you have to control your garden pests. And everybody says, oh my gosh, garden pests. <laughs> well, if you control your pests, 
you're gonna prevent a lot of other garden problems. So how do you do that? Well, when you buy seeds, skip disease resistant varieties or hybrids, which are usually a lot more disease resistant than the old open pollinated ones. Um, you know, a lot of our um, seeds now are bred for disease resistance. Also use treated seeds like um, peas and a lot of sweet corn. It's all treated with an inoculant, so it you know, prevents a lot of um, disease. When you purchase plants, make sure you inspect your plant to make sure that your plants are healthy. And that's what I forgot to bring. I wanted to bring a house plant that's got um, uh, nice. It, it, it's got cottony. Uh, powdery mildew. No, not powdery mildew. I know what you mean. What is that stuff? <sighs> Joan, help me out. I don't know. Um, I had it on an owl plant. Yeah, yeah. It, on, it, it, they succulent. like the succulent yeah. ones. Oh, yeah. And it gets like cottony yeah. material and it sucks the oh, juice out. Yeah. And um, big thing is take a Q-tip and use alcohol. And that usually will take care of them. But um, the, you know, that's the big thing. Inspect your plants. We, at the fair, invariably, we always have some kid that comes in with an infected house plant every year. Mm -hmm. And we got to say, I, 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 you know, I, we can't keep this here because it's going to infest everything else. Uh, mealy, mealy bugs? Mealy bugs, yes. That's it. Mealy bugs. Yes. So, um, and keep your soil healthy. We've been talking about keep your soil healthy and nutritionist. Well, just like if you're sickly, nine chances out of 10, you're going to pick up more stuff. Same thing with your soil. If your soil is unhealthy, it's going to pick everything up under the sun. Keep your friendly weeds out of your garden. And that's always a chore and a half. Mulch your plants and do not work in the garden when plants are wet. Why is that? Because you bring diseases around. <clears throat> yes. Do not because just like you never the overhead watering is probably the worst kind of watering you could use because if you've got a soil-borne bacteria fungi and the water sprays drops down well it drops and what does it do those spores it washes them up and where do they go on the bottom of your plant leaf so then all of a sudden your plant is infected Powdery mildew, big culprit. Oh, that's how you get that. And you never water at nighttime. You know, um, same thing. You know, because that's when you know the the spores and the fungi grows. Um, and if you have a diseased plant, you know, like if this one is diseased and it's in a flap, well, get rid of it because it's eventually going to spread to everything. When we had that one year when we planted um, impatience, it started right in the middle, and within a matter of two days, the whole flap just <laughs> dropped over, dead. Mm. Um, they get very weak, and they get very limp, and eventually they'll just, boom, they'll drop right over. So... Um, Rotate your garden crops. Um, try to rotate to different spots every three years. Try to, you know, switch. I always tell, well, if you plant potatoes down here this year, 
you know, you could try them there next year, but then go way to the opposite end of the garden the next year. So um, use bait to get rid of slugs and snails and uh, use a fence to keep out rabbits or other animals, which isn't always easy. The deer will jump right over the fence or whatever. You know what keeps deer away? What? And it worked because I did it last year. Is dove soap? Oh yes, yes. I, I put a piece of binder twine that know all the way around the garden, and then I drilled a hole through right to the bar yep. and tied it mm -hmm. up. And we've got a wildlife camera, you know, and sure. the way aimed it out there, and the deer they don't they walk right past. Yes. But otherwise, they were in there. They're eating the footprints all over. <laughs> And I thought, I don't. I mean, kind of how cheap is it? Well, Irish Spring, I think, was the same. Because Irish yeah, Spring yeah, got yeah. a lot of deodorant in it. Yeah. Yes. So, 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 so you, you take the wrapper off or yeah, you leave the wrapper off? I take the wrapper off and then okay. I take a drill and hold it you on. Know, put a piece of binder twine and tie it on. See, you, you go to motels and hotels a lot of times you can ask them because that's basically the kind of soap they use mm -hmm. and you can say what do you do with all your old soap from a room when it's used once oh we throw it out perfect way and you don't need to go buy it <laughs> So what would you want to use somebody's old soap? Keep deer away. <laughs> Keep your deer away. But I mean, yeah. Yeah, nowadays, I don't know if they even let you do that. Yeah, you never know. I never would have Oh, yeah, they, it years ago, that used to be a big thing. I would put soap in, I decorate the graves, and I'll put soap in the... You know, with the green things you stick all the flowers in there, put a piece of soap in there. Yeah. There's some cemeteries, the flowers are all over the beer just playing yeah. with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mine, he left them all. Huh. I always put a little soap in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, and you can always take your old nylons, but women don't wear them anymore. Um, go and put the soap in there and hang them up. You didn't even have to cut it, you know, you could just hang it in there. Nylon. So, okay. Um, you shower while you're weeding. Yeah, <laughs> it starts oh. raining. Just water. Freshen up. Well, I see virgins put them too by baby after. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes, a lot of you see that lot if you walk and people think, why don't they have this? So, well, the people that were there, they didn't yeah. take a shower. Would that keep the mosquitoes out too then? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> if it was citronella, so maybe, huh? That citronella doesn't even keep them. Oh, it doesn't away. keep okay. I don't okay. think okay. it does. Oh, we had so many mosquitoes. Yeah, they're out Cucumbers. there now already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Buzzing around like crazy. But it's getting dry, so that'll hurt their population. Yep, yep. Yep. You said about bait for slug. What kind of bait? I've never really hunted for. For slugs? Yeah. Beer. Beer, exactly. Beer. Um, if you put it in a um, aluminum foil pie tin, put it in there, and you know, you'll uh, have the slugs crawling to get in there, and they drown. Um, you know, sometimes I never really had a problem with it, but I just was interested in what you would use. That's what, you're using that's what you use. And they like to come around carrots. Yep, yes, mm. yes. And then is it bugs or cats or? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make, I don't think they're fussy. <laughs> they're not fussy. <laughs> like us, golden free. <laughs> um, raccoons will go and drink it also. So. Uh, that sounds like cannibal. Yeah, but that doesn't kill them. It just makes them no drunk. <laughs> they, just, <laughs> they just run out the road. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's another way that, but I won't say how, uh, but you can get rid of raccoons with beer and some other product, mm -hmm. and you can. Yeah, yeah. It's really <laughs> they, they don't go very far from the pan, mm -hmm. and they drop yeah, over, yeah. and they're gone. Yeah. Right? So you I have to clean up. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. 
I said, you have to clean up. If you're doing that with the coon, you got to clean up every day. <laughs> I was going to trade some guinea hens. They only eat bugs. You know, it's um, my garden expenses around the big fence. Put the wings you can't fly out. Hmm. I just leave them loose all day because I got a pen. Well, you, you don't want them to be out too much. You don't want to get uh, avian birds mm -hmm. because now foxes are infested. Yeah. Oh. And, really? mm -hmm. I notice more dead songbirds in the yard. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yep. I don't know that either. Oh, no. Yeah, there's all, and that's why I would. You know, they used to have chicken swaps all over the city. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Can't canceled. do that. All yeah. canceled. They're all canceled. I'm waiting for the fair. They all say, ah, no showing of fowl. Yeah, there's a big outbreak going on. Yes, big outbreak. So my my son has some laying hens, and he always used to just let them yeah. go. And he said, nope, I'm not even letting them out of the coop. Mm -hmm. So... Too expensive. Okay, other things. Diseases. So what do you do to um, some of the diseases that affect your gardening plants? Stamping off of seedlings. Well, how does that happen? Um, you only know, appear your, your seedling is healthy like this, and all of a sudden um, the soil fungi. Uh, at the soil level, it like I said, it'll wilt and just drop over dead. Um, again, how do you prevent? Well, use treated seed again. Make sure you use sterilized soil when you're starting your plants. And also, you can use chemical control. When we get done with this, we'll talk a little bit about different chemicals that I bought along and, you know, like I said, how to read and, you know, interpret labels. Uh, fungal diseases, you know, it's on manure plant, on mature plants, uh, like early tomato blight. Um, when you use a fungicide, make sure you're using the correct fungicide for that. I can't specifically say which chemical to use because some chemical company might say, well, we didn't like that you said that you should have used. So I don't even get into suggesting any kind. Um, and you need to use it before disease starts. If the disease is there, you can dump all you want and it is not going to solve the problem. Um, uh, Root knot uh, nodules, that's the little worms that get into your squash and the vines, and all of a sudden it gets in, it burrows a hole, and it starts eating, and it lays its eggs, and it starts eating. All of a sudden your squash plant will look beautiful. Two days later, there it's all laying on the ground. You know, well, your little... Uh, Nematodes have gotten in there and they've eaten a whole water supply system. And so it has no nutritional way of getting anything to eat the plant. So, um, so you must, you know, uh, change locations. If it's there one year, don't plant there again next year, unless you've treated it with chemical treatment. Um, Bacterial viral diseases transmitted by insects and rain, splash irrigation, and like I said, don't water your plants at night. Uh, blossom drop. You know, now we're, we had hot weather. Now the nighttime temperatures are dropping. And if your tomatoes are blossoming and it's below 55 degrees, they're not going to set any fruit for you. You know, if it's on, it'll abort it, you know, and that's um, one thing you always got to watch. Treatment for powdery mildew. People say, well, I don't want to use chemicals. Well, one and a half tablespoons of baking soda, three tablespoons of lightweight horticulture oil. Now, you can't, you cannot go and get 
car oil that you use motor oil and use that. Can't do that. And you mix that in a gallon of water and then you spray the leaves with that. And that will treat powdery mildew. It's basically an organic way of treating. Um, what was that again? One and a okay. half tablespoons? One and a half tablespoons baking soda. You know, she can't bake anymore. Go take all her baking right. soda and use it. So oh, it's in the refrigerator. So yes. It's all them order. Well, so but, but it. now if you use it in the refrigerator, it's not near as fresh, and you're not going to get the. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just to, I, I knew somebody was going to say it's in the refrigerator, <laughs> and I'm glad you said that. Um, so use fresh baking soda. Three tablespoons of lightweight horticulture oil. Would neem oil work? Yeah. Well, it's horticulture oil. Neem oil is basically horticulture oil. Okay, and mix that in a gallon of water and shake it up and then use that as a spray. So, um, some of our, you know, our destructive insects, um, you know, that we have floating around and everything, uh, I'll just run through you know, like aph aphids and plant lice, um, the beetles, the cucumber beetles, they're the striped and the spotted ones, mm -hmm. and we all know what they look like, because they'll just, you know, devour your leaves, and uh, the uh, cutworms, the old black army worms, they all go and, you know, eat everything off of a tree. Um, my flowering crab is in blue and I'm pretty sure the old army worms will be in there pretty quick and people say well where do they come from well they overwinter around the ground mm -hmm. and then they go up the tree they hatch and up the tree they go um, flea beetles grasshoppers leaf hoppers you know the maggots um, the root maggots like we talked about they get in your squash and you know, things like that, snugs it, slugs and snails. Um, you know, if you have, you want to find if you got slugs, put a board out in your garden and leave it. And if it's wet, the slugs will all go under there at night or in the morning. And that's where they stay. And you want to know, flip it over and you'll tell if you got slugs uh, or snails in your garden. Um, so that's basically all the good things. Um, and people say, well, what kind of organic things can you use? And, um, you know, there's, you know, like you talked about neem oil. Um, there's other horticulture oils that control insects. Uh, safer is a brand that is frequently referred to uh, as organic. Um, BT, uh, Bacillus, can't pronounce it, uh, Thurgan Genesis or something like that, BT, uh, that's why they call it BT. Uh, pyrethrums and rotenone, um, you know, rotenone garden dust. It's actually an organic dust, which shocked me when I was going through, and it's on the university list for uh, plant pesticide control. Well, you know, what is it good for your cabbage worms and broccoli and all those little green environments? Well, it actually is a powder, and it's uh, considered as an organic, so... Um, Garlic-based pesticides. In a lot of this, you know, you can use, and uh, if it works, I don't know uh, if it works. Some people swear by it. Others, you know, find that it's um, not um, 
So I had talked about, you know, the value of some of these, you know, these chemicals. And the big thing is people get very upset, you know, as to, you know, should I use them? It's going to hurt me. This is going to, you know, whatever. You use this kind of dust. If you go out and use it and you cut the head the next day and you eat it, yes, you might have some residual effect from it. If you use chemicals, you got to learn, you have to wash your vegetables very good, rinse them, and not use this a couple days before you harvest. And the big thing is always read your directions. You know, it's all on here of for dusting, for spraying, uh, for use on beans, for use on cabbage, cauliflower, potato, eggplants, cucumbers. It gives you, you a magnifying glass. Mm -hmm. right? yeah, that's <laughs> what, I, so I can read it. <laughs> yeah, that one ain't too bad. <laughs> um, this one's not so bad, but read the crazy label. That's why they put labels on. The big thing what I wanted to draw your attention to is you look for the key word down in the bottom, and this one says caution. Okay. This one, which isn't for, you know, it's a, a pre paint surface preparation, it cleans and whatever. The key word for that is danger. So, which one is more, it is worse than the other one, the one that says danger, you know, um, this gas line additive, keyword, danger, um, you know, where it's very caustic, you know, um, keep it away from kids, you know. Wasn't uh, it caution and the other one warning? Is there one? No, they don't usually put warning. Okay. It's either danger or caution. caution. Okay. And if a simple one might be warning. I was I even dug out some of my wife's comet cleaner. What's right on the bottom? Caution. It's a caution one. And you think, well, a plain old household cleaner is probably just as bad as using this. Or this Roundup is listed caution. It's not listed as danger. It's listed as caution. And again, um, home insect killer. Keyword caution. You know, you can come and look at these later, but look for the keyword on it. We. Um, had a master gardener class the whole night. All we talked about were reading labels of household cleaners, of insecticide, pesticides, everything of what to look for when you buy and use these things. Same thing with using Roundup. People say, well, if I use Roundup, it's going to be absorbed then from the soil up into my plant. Well, Roundup does not have a real high residual. Once it's done, it's gone. You, you know? have to have the leaf surface. It doesn't come in the ground. Anymore. Right. It's not right. systemic. Yeah. Well, and, you know, unless you dump the whole bottle out, you know, and this is uh, the concentrate plus. But this one, again, is labeled caution. Keep out of the reach of children. That's the big thing with any of these. If you use this garden dust, don't go out on a windy day like today and stand in the wind and go like this where it's all coming at you. What are you going to be doing? You're going to be inhaling that. You don't want to do that. And it'll all go away anyhow. It's a new mosquito deterrent. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your leaves aren't wet, so it's not going to stick. This has to stick on your leaves to prevent the insects. And so should you put it on in the morning when there's dew? Yes, okay. but don't go in your garden when it's damp. Okay, you know, so you got to kind of tiptoe around it and put this on. I've got a, it's 
like about this long and has a spout and it's got the little handle and you put your dry stuff in it. Yeah. It makes a really nice, even fluffy layer. Sure. Instead of that, all of a sudden you get a big chunk. It's like a blower. Yeah. It's yeah. got a little yeah. handle yeah. in it. Yeah. See, when I was a kid, my mother had, um, you would put it in a container and you would go with the hand yeah. mm -hmm. like a fly sprayer. Oh, like a fly sprayer. Yeah. And you know, we always, well, now you don't see that. That's too much work for all of us. <laughs> you know, we want instant just go out and shake. You don't want to put it in a container and go out and pump it. You know, might have a, a little action. But I think it was much, much more effective. Mm -hmm. Because you could get under the bottom of the leaves. Well, this this you can't. It yes. curves up. Yep. Yeah. It curves up and you can mm -hmm. get it really where easy. this you can't. That's probably breaking up in the finer pieces a little bit to make more of a powder. Yep. Yep. Dust yep. Instead of a lump. So, so that's my little uh, song and dance about, you know, chemicals. And it's not that I'm a proponent of using Roundup or this or this or any of that, you know, you have to make your own decision as to what you want to use. And use it according to direction. Oh, I, thank you. I can't stress that enough because and if you use Roundup, don't say, well, I'm going to take some Roundup and mix it with 2,4-D. You don't do that. You don't do that. You're just asking for more problems. And just like some people, well, uh, the doctor said I should take a half a pill. Well, I'll take a whole pill because that'll make me better quick. People do the same thing with chemicals. Well, it calls for one fourth cup in five gallons. Well, I'll put um, a whole cup in because I'll get better action. <laughs> Don't do that. You're you're wasting your money, and it probably is not near as effective as if you follow the directions that comes with that. And all of them have directions. You like you said you might need a magnifying glass, <laughs> but if you can't read it, you'll then get a magnifying glass and use it and look what you're supposed to do. No, follow the directions. All the people with their yards being sprayed, there's something on Facebook that it's killing all the um, lightning bug larvas. Oh, I believe that. Them. Sure. We're lucky we're out in the country and mm -hmm. we have a lot of lightning bugs. So, yeah, years ago when I was a kid, you would see lots of them. And then you haven't seen as many. And now you're starting to you know, see them again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Where do they want to kill the lightning bugs? Well, see, they well, spray they their lawns. Oh, the yeah. the oh, the and then okay. it's killing those. Yeah. Yeah. I found one once underneath a, a garbage can that I keep cat food in. And I moved it. What's that little thing glowing there? It was a larva. A larva. I never mm -hmm. seen that before. Mm -hmm. It's glowing. What is that? Oh. Yeah. Huh. It was cool. in the dirt. We get that bug by us. So ladybug or no, fireflies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you look out the window at night and all you see yeah, the whole lawn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. No, exactly. <laughs> you said about the beetles and the cucumbers. Did you say what you were putting on them for them? The one? Oh, okay. No, I did not say okay. use anything specific. Okay. Yeah. This will work. Okay. It does, but you have to stay on top of it, right? Because if it rains or if you water, it washes everything off. Then, the last we had it in the cucumbers, all it's come out there the next morning, it just mm -hmm. yep, cold as it. Yeah. Yep, a little bastard. And they they fly in a couple of years ago, I can't remember what the insect was, but I got a call out in Hayden. This tree was just full. There were thousands of insects. And I should have taken a picture of it. And you go the next day, I was going to go back. There wasn't one there. 
and but they were all gone. Just they stopped over for over, you know, on the, their journey, just like certain birds, mm -hmm. you know. Or bees, honey bees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Come on, our butterflies. Yeah. We'll be there one day and go on the next. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Monarchs are declining population also. Mm -hmm. Very much. And, you know, it's not... You know, they, the highway departments, we all want clean road sites. And if the highway departments didn't go spray or cut, uh, we would all be grumbling about that. We want everything to look manicured to the greatest. And, you know, it's, it's kind of sad because they cut the milkweed down, they cut this down or that down, and where do all of our beneficial insects live and breed and grow, you know? So... So what do you want to tell us about our bios no, no. What I want to know, do you know what that is in the other, not that one, what that yeah, is? That's what I was going to ask you. What is that? They're, we had three of them come up under a tree. We thought Sharon thinks it's a watermelon. I says, no, it's not a watermelon. You think it's a wild cucumber? Yeah, yeah they look just oh. like that. Wild wow, cucumber. Mm -hmm. And that with the sticky, how would that dots? come? Because no, I got those other, the, I call them nature's uh, Christmas lights. You know, yes. I get that line, and then in the winter, they're still hanging there. Yeah. I call them yeah. Yeah. Christmas That's a nice way to, yeah. Uh, they, they, oh, I, they're kind of like a, a round ball. Yeah, they've yes. got like two holes in them. Yeah. They, they look like a miniature oh, hoopa sponge. They yeah, all over the place. Yeah. Okay. Yep. They gorge or... No, well, oh, it's like okay. a miniature lufa sponge. Yeah, it, you know, the, the is, is only yeah. like this. Because big. it came, I, th I think last year one came up. We thought it was a watermelon because we would eat yeah. watermelon under trees, tree, spit the seeds out, mm -hmm. and the seeds out, and we throw it. So and, that's what I think. And I thought was. I planted last year and it got about that tall and just kind of squirrely, viney, and nothing mm -hmm. on it. So I just. Well, it could be because if it was a watermelon, you spit the seeds yeah. out. And nine chances out of ten, it's not going to be another watermelon. Plant didn't grow it and see what you get. That's, well, I said last year it kind of got up. He dug it out tall. of the grass. That's why it was grass. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can see that. And but I said last year it didn't develop into anything. Yeah. So well, and I don't know how many you dug up. Your got four. Look good. I got, got four. four of them. <laughs> Those are from that other company that. That had a store. <laughs> lemon. Oh, lemon. Uh. Oh, it's a yellow one? Yeah, it's a yellow tomato. Yeah. Not an orange, a yellow yellow. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> right. Nice. I think so. It says yeah. lemon. So. Yep. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. We in started them uh, in the little pots and then we transferred them. Yeah, that's sure. Really nice. We got about 150 of them going now. So. <laughs> 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 she thinks of it. And the peppers that we planted, we bought one of those little boxes, you know, and you just uh, put the, the seeds starting, in. The starting ones? I put the peppers in it, and, and it, I think in a month now, they're this tall, finally. Mm -hmm. It took forever, peppers, with my son says, well, peppers take forever to come out. Yeah. Okay. Bottom heat, bottom yeah. heat. Remember we talked about Yeah. Well, I have it by the, regi yeah. I have yeah, it by the register. Yeah. Not good enough. Not enough? No. Okay. Uh, Got to get a water bed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or one of those. Yeah. Okay. Look if you see a um, propagation map, Matt, at the end of the season. Yeah. You know, that's where I got our two of them. I okay. got them for little or nothing because they had them marked down half price. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't sell okay. it. Pe that's what so peppers they, need. They need more heat than the tomatoes. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. I bought some 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 more peppers. So. You want to pass this? Oh. You asked me to email it, and I didn't. Yes, I know. I was yeah, going to scold you. <laughs> remember, <laughs> remember, we talked about. Uh, well, we can kind of read this okay. since we're on live on. And it, all, and it all did it in three days. Yes. <laughs> 
wait for apple trees to bloom before planting bush beans. Oh, they're blooming now. Uh -huh. When apple blossoms fall, plant pole beans and cucumbers. By the time the lilacs are in full bloom, it will be safe to plant tender annual flowers and squash. Well, my lilacs are almost right ready to pop. The, are cool. the air is so heavy. Yeah, and I yes. just after this, oh my God, almost not yet. Transfer tomato transplants to the garden when lily of the valley is in full flower. My lilies in the valley are growing, are blossoming like crazy. Mine are open. Mine are coming up. Ours are up, but they're not blossoming. Yeah. Judy, Judy had, I walked in the kitchen the, this uh, morning after I came uh, home, must have and here's all spot. these uh, on the west side yeah. of the house where it's warm. The ones on the north are just low. Mm -hmm. Okay, continuing. Full-size maple leaves signal time to plant morning glory seeds. Peppers and eggplant can be transplanted when the bearded irises are blooming. When peonies blossom, it is safe to plant heat-loving melons such as cantaloupe. Mm, that's so, cool. It was on Facebook. I'm going to try that. <laughs> So she was nice to print yeah. some off. Thank you. So you can each uh, take one of those. And I have it written on the calendar, June 15th, we should get rain because it's 90 days after a heavy fog. <laughs> so I got that written <laughs> down. <laughs> yes, Judy. <laughs> June 15th. June 15th. June 15th. And that's uh, about right. Remember we had the big flood yes. June 8th yep, that yep, one year? Yep. Yes. Well, we don't want to flood. We don't like it. No, we hold a poor old county. Oh, God, it just oh. sat there. Oh. Yep. And I think over in Lower Michigan, they had a spot too that did yes. the same thing. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. And so Washington, wash the, some of those big culverts. Well, oh, ice, yeah. ice on E going to Stockbridge for years. Oh. You would have heavy rain then, and, would <laughs> just, and now they got smart. They got big, heavy rock. Yeah. Well, yeah. Bigger rock, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's amazing when water will push, you know. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. put big rock in it. Yep, yep. It'll be gone. Well, look at that culvert that it popped out yeah. of right. the Okama County. You know, and it's... Mm -hmm. Like it's churning in there. And just... Yep, yep. People think, well, I can drive through. It's no, no problem. Scary. Pick well, your car up and oh, scare you away. With a canine in the car, that was on the news. Yeah. Oh, kind of. That was the yeah, the canine. Mm -hmm. the cup guard. Yeah. So, hmm. well, any well, other good questions before we're almost done here? Yeah, no, but I thank you so much for sharing yes, your when's knowledge. The, when's the first uh, farmers market? Mm -hmm. Uh June. 17th, Father's, when they have the big Father's Day. Oh, thing. okay. Okay. So Father's Day weekend, Friday. Yes. And what time? 10, 10 to 2. 10 to 2. The publications all say 11 to 4. That is not correct. It's 10 to 2, like we've had the last year or so. <laughs> okay. So, okay. the plant sale date. Excellent. Good. Excellent. Excellent. We, it, unbelievable. I was saying before um, you guys got here, we, um, I went up to high school by, because FFA had their mm -hmm. plant sale, and I said, Amy, can't I get some hanging baskets because we're <laughs> old? So she said, get out of here. We're all <laughs> sold out too. You can't have any. <laughs> so... Yes. Yeah. Yep. Well, I'm going to turn this light out here, not to tell you to go away, but just so I can see the screen, so I can. Well, you, you mean we have more questions? Feel free to ask. I'm just getting ready to. Did you disconnect? Sign this? off. I'm working on it. Okay. Here I'm talking smart. <laughs> here I'm. So thanks again, Byron. Oh, you yeah. Well, I had fun. One lady, mm -hmm. I've had several people that came up to me and said, 
thank you for doing that. Good. And one lady said, well, you know, I watched when you were giving good info. You start goofing off and talking, and then I just fast forward it. <laughs> and I said, Well, thanks so much. Thank you. So, on that note, maybe we'll see everybody at the farmer's market. And yeah. thanks again. Okay. So, yeah. Now, now, you, now, now, now yeah. you can talk about what you put on the cucumbers. <laughs> yeah. Seven. Seven. <laughs>